Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and I got a 1 to 76 leveling guide for you. This one's based as a necromancer mastery with cold minions. We'll have the cold golem, the cold mages, and the cold skeletons. A lot of them will have AoE, and it will do a ton of good damage in both an AoE section and for single targets. So you can just wipe through those echoes in the end game basically without stopping, as you can see in the gameplay. The only time you're going to be stopping is when you need to cast Infernal Shade and Dread Shade back onto the minions to buff the damage that they're doing, which will be huge. And it's going to allow you, again, to take out those echoes and single targets quick. Now, this is based around a couple of items that you'll need to farm either prior, or you could do it on this character, and the damage will be less until you get them. One will be the Lich's Scorn Catalyst, which is a set item. It drops on the Blood, Frost, and Death timeline from the Boss Forcemos. It is Boss Farm targetable, so after a few attempts, you should be able to get it. And that one's going to give all of our minions added spell and melee cold damage to all their attacks based on how many Infernal Shades you had active when you cast Dread Shade. And we'll be doing about six Infernal Shades, and for ours, ours rolled a 10 per shade, so we're getting 60 added cold damage for the Mages, the Skeletons, and for the Golem when Dread Shade is active, which is 100% uptime that you can have of this, which just really gives them a huge amount of damage, along with Dread Shade giving them all of that cast speed and increased damage, which is huge. So you can see we're just wiping through the mobs. You really don't have to do anything than other about every 30 to 45 seconds, casting Infernal Shade and Dread Shade back onto your minions. Your survivability will also depend on how you want to play it. For me, I went low life, so I have Insanguous and Last Steps of Living, two more uniques you might want to farm beforehand. If you play a full life build, you'll be more based on potions and just kind of staying away from being hit. You'll have a little bit of health regen, but there isn't going to be a big way for you to get a whole bunch of healing. You don't have any healing spells or ways to really regenerate, so I do recommend going low life with this build. And again, I also recommend farming all of those before you start this, or at least by level 63 when you can use all of them. Now, just like all the other leveling guides that I do, this one will have all the timestamps below of when I put in my points into my skills and passives at set points at a certain level. And then, of course, I'll go over the gear that I'm wearing, as well as on the character sheet, what you should be looking for for resist and such in the area that you're at at that time in the game. With all of that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Alright travelers, we are now level 4 time to spec into our first skill, couple of passive points, first the character sheet, at this point in the game, getting your elemental resist, mostly your fire elemental resist is going to really make you not feel quite so squishy, of course this is early game, get some physical as well, but resistances are the main thing to look at as well as getting some extra maximum health. Right now, as an Acolyte, you're using Rip Blood, which is giving you health back every cast, so your survivability should be really good at this point in the game. For skills, we're going to go ahead and spec into our first one, which is going to be Summon Skeleton. For Summon Skeleton, the first things we're going to want with it is getting more skeletons. So you have two choices. You can build into the damage for the archers or the health for the warriors, which we're mostly going archers and we'll eventually go all archers with this. So you can get more damage to unlock a skeleton or you can build into their attack speed first and unlock there. I'm going to go attack speed first with one point in Holy Rage, and then we're going to work towards Marrow Walkers. But getting these plus two skeletons is obviously going to boost your damage having more minions. Passives, so we got two points. We're going to go ahead and throw both of the points into the Blood Aura for increased minion damage. This increases our damage with Rip Blood that we're casting right now, but that's obviously not the main damage source. It's going to be the minions. And then for the inventory, right now the only unique that I have on is the Arboreal Circuit. The main stats you're just looking for right now is get your resist, get minion damage. That's really all you need. A bunch of uniques that you can wear. There's the leveling uniques that you have. We have the Acolyte Relic, which is going to give us plus one skills. Can't wear that till level 30. But other ones, Reach of the Grave is really nice for your minion survivability early on as well as giving them more damage. The Double Devonus tool will give them a bunch of bleed chance, which will help do damage, especially to single targets. And then at level 31, you can put on Hollow Fingers for this plus one maximum skeleton. Some of these are later, but of course, these are a bunch of uniques to keep your eyes out on or, or to find on other characters and then bring over. That'll be it for level four. I'll see you guys at level eight when we spec into our next skill.
Alright, travelers, we are now level 9, which means it's time to spec into our second skill. We are doing this at level 9 versus 8, so that we had enough passive points to unlock the Bone Golem first. You are still looking for the Fire and the Physical Resist. Those are the two main things that you're hitting, but just getting, getting all your resist up is really going to be the main thing that makes you not feel so squishy, as, long, as well as your maximum health. For skills, we got three more points for Summon Skeleton. We're going to throw one more in Unholy Rage. That unlocks the Marrow Walkers. Put one there. You can now have four Skeletons. And now we're going to start working towards Hollow Walkers. So one point into Necrotic Conviction. This will give your Archers more damage as well as your Warriors a little bit more health. And then for the next one, we're going to have the Summon Bone Golem, but first our passive so that we can unlock it. We're going to cap out the Blood Aura with six more points, and then start throwing our points in Stolen Vitality for that Vitality, which our Cold Bone Golem will indeed scale off of that Vitality for damage, which will be really nice. So, the last two points in there. And then for the Bone Golem, which we're going to specialize as our second skill, we got one point. We're going to go ahead and throw it in the Amalgam of Primalist, and then work into that Cold Vengeance so that we get that melee cold damage added which is a huge amount early on that's going to make your bone golem hit really really hard and then we'll convert it over to a death chill golem instead of a bone golem after we get a few more points and then for the inventory again at this point the reach of the grave is really nice it's going to give your minions some leech so that they'll have a little bit better survivability that's for their spells and their bow attacks that's why we're going to end up going with all bowmen because this increases their damage as well as gives them that leech and then it also makes them cast the spell is going to be nice for the skeleton mages which we'll get later and then the cold bone golem while it is melee cold it will have a cold spell that it uses so it will benefit there as well and then for everything else again just go with the resistances that you need and then minion damage to really boost the minions damage that they're doing to help clear through the map and campaign a little bit faster but that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 12 for the next one Alright travelers, we are now level 13. At this point, just continue on with your resistances in chapter 2 that we're going through right now. Void is the main thing that you're going to want for resistance, so if you're having any survivability issues, make sure to get some void resist on one or two pieces of your gear, as well as getting that health up. The main thing that's keeping me alive right now is just the fact that I don't have to be in the fight, and two, being able to use rip blood even though it's not spec gives me health every time I hit an enemy with it, so it'll replenish your health, so that is a huge thing, and that'll continue to work for us through a good portion of the campaign. For skills, we got two more points for Summon Skeleton. We're going to throw one more in the Necrotic Conviction and then one point in Hollow Walkers for another plus one maximum. The next thing we're going to be working towards is removing the Warriors so that we only have the Archers. Again, especially with the reach of the Grave that we have and the fact that we'll be going cold, we're going to want the Bowmen to be the only thing that we have so that they get that Leech and the increased damage. Then for the Summon Bone Golem, we got three more points. We're going to throw two of them in the Cold of Vengeance for that melee cold damage. And then one point in Death Chill Golem so that we can now have that Death Chill Golem, which will be cold for us. Again, everything we do is going to be based around cold minions for this. And then for passives, five more points. We're going to throw all five of them into the Stolen Vitality. And the reason that Vitality is super important is because that next point for the Death Chill Golem is going to go into that Breath of Forcemos, which is going to give us more damage per point of vitality for him for that freezing grass which will be the cold spell that he's doing which is really going to give him some nice damage and then for the inventory nothing's changed here for gear again the reach of the grave if you don't have this any one-handed staff that you have or, or even a two-handed staff you can throw minion physical damage onto it and or minion spell damage either way it's going to be a ton of increased damage for you and then everything else just get the resistance you need and increased minion damage to really boost what they're doing and, and kind of help you through the campaign even quicker but that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 20 when we spec into our third skill
Alright, travelers, we are now level 20 and still moving through chapter 3. Void resist still being the main thing that you really want to stack at this point, along with your health. Again, rip blood is the main thing to get your life back at this point. It gives you a little bit of that health on hit from the enemies, but mostly you just want to stay out of the fight and run around and let your minions do all of the killing for you. For skills, we got two more points for summon a skeleton. We're going to go ahead and throw one of them into Unholy Rage for more attack speed for them. And then, of course, one point in Lone Guardian so that we will be limited to one warrior. Our next point will go into Mightier Than the Sword to remove the warrior so that we will have just the archers. After that, we'll be converting them to cold. For the summon bone golem, we got three more points. We're going to go ahead and throw one point in Breath of Force. Most of the freezing grass now scales its damage with vitality, which will help it do even more damage for us. And then two more points into Cold Vengeance to give him even more melee cold damage, which will really boost his damage. The next skill will be the mages, but first got to do the passives. We have 11 more passive points, five of them going into the Acolyte with one point in Soul and Vitality, and four points into Dark Rituals for that minion attack and cast speed. The other six points all going into Necromancer, and all six of them going into Risen Army for that minion damage and minion attack and cast speed. That'll unlock the mages for you, so we can now spec into it. The first four points, we're going to go ahead and throw three of them into Cell Mortis for that to base crit chance for them, and one point into Order of Death so that we can have a plus one at maximum, so you'll be able to have four Four skeleton mages at this point to really boost your overall army and then for the inventory nothing's changed here again just go for the resistances you need the minion damage to boost them and if you're having real survivability issues I don't have any increased minion health but if they are just dying too much for you you can throw some minion health on some gear as well that'll be it for this update I'll see you guys at level 27 for the next one Alright travelers, we are now level 27, time for another update with some more points. At this point, going into chapter 4, the main thing you want is physical and necrotic resist. Those are the two things that you're really going to want to not feel so squishy. For me, we're just really hiding behind the minions and not having a hard time surviving. The minions are also killing things quite quickly. But again, physical and necrotic resist, two main things you really want from this point going forward in this area. For skills, we got two more points for Summon Skeleton. We're going to go ahead and put one into the Mightier Than the Sword, so it removes the Warrior, so we will only have the Archers at this point. Then we're going to put one point in Fire Arrow. This will convert them to Fire Archers, but one more will convert them into the Ice one, so they will be cold. That'll be the next thing. And then after that, we're going to work towards the Grave Walkers for another plus one at maximum Skeleton. For Summon Bone Golem, three more points. We're going to cap out to the Cold of Vengeance for that melee cold damage, and then two of them into a Movement of Rogues for that melee attack speed and more move speed, just to really speed up that Golem attacking and moving. And then we got five points for Summon Skeleton Mage, and four of them going into Grave Tide to give them a bunch more of that flat spell damage, which will be huge for their damage, and one point to Cryomancers to convert them over to Cold. Next, we will put one in Frost Lich, to not only give them more damage, but made to where we are only getting the cold mages from that point forward. And for passives, we've got nine more points. We're going to throw eight of them into blood armor. This will increase the minion health regen, giving them a flat 16 health back per second, which will really help with their survivability. And then one more point into risen army for more minion damage and attack speed. And then for the inventory, nothing's really changed here. We did throw on a Pebble Scarf for a little bit of minion melee cold damage, but that's nothing compared to what your Golem is already getting. So any crafted item is going to be just about as good. And again, just remember physical and necrotic resist at this point are all of them if you have room on your items. 
and that's all. And none of these uniques are actually mandatory at this point, but the Reach of the Grave also just really helps with those minions getting that leech and just having better survive ability. But that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 35 when we spec into our fourth skill. Alright Travelers, we are now level 35, which means we get to spec into our fourth skill, which would be Dreadshade if you have enough passives or you want to wait. However, we're going to go ahead and go with Infernal Shade, as it will be unlocked for us. So first for the character sheet, again at this point, Necrotic and Physical Resist are the two main things that you want. I haven't needed them and our survivability has been pretty good. Again, the minions take the brunt of the damage and you just kind of hide around with them. We're also switching to low life on this, but with full life, it's kind of just the same gig. Make sure you run around and just try not to get hit. For skills, we got three more points for summon skeleton. We're going to go ahead and throw one into the ice arrow to convert them over to cold, and then two of them into unbound necromancy, with the next one going into grave walkers for another plus one maximum skeleton. For bone gall, three more points, all three going into the amalgam of rogues for that melee attack speed for him. For the summon skeleton mage, four more points. We're going to go ahead and throw one into grave tide to cap out that flat spell damage for them, and then three of them into splintered dominion give them that chance for extra projectiles so that they'll have some better AoE so you can clear out high mob density maps a lot quicker. And then for the next skill it will be Infernal Shade as our fourth one here. And again I do have plus one because of the erased Acolyte Relic that we have on. So that's where the extra one point is coming from for all these. And then for the Infernal Shade the six points, three of them going into Influence one into devour and flame so that we can now put the infernal shade on our minions one point in subjugation so that it does the infernal shade will do extra damage per second but then the last points into manic prior so it'll give the minion that it's on increased cast speed attack speed and move speed up to a cap which will be really nice so everything will start attacking faster and we'll be putting this on a bunch of our minions and later for every shade that we have, it's going to give base cold damage, or extra flat cold damage to all of our minions, which will be... So that's why we're building into it now. And for passives, 11 more points. Cap out the Risen Army, 5 of them into Mortal Teether, with 1 in Unbound Necromancy for that additional skeleton, 3 of them into Cursed Blood. We don't need the physical or the necrotic damage, but we do want the Armor Shred. That's a damage multiplier for our minions, which will be... So one point into Aegis Fall and we'll work towards capping that out next and then getting a bunch of flat damage and critical strike chance in the top half of the tree. And then for the inventory, like I said, nothing really changed here. I'm getting plus one to all my Acolyte skills to the ambitions of the Erased Acolyte. Not needed. And then again, we're going low life on this build, so we do have Insanguius on with the gloves to give us a percent of missing health as ward every second but again not needed you can do this as a full life build it works that way as well but that's it for this update see you guys at level 43 for the next one
All right, travelers. We are now level 42. Time to throw in some more points again. At this point, going into Heoboria, the main thing that you're going to want is cold and physical resist. So, really, at this point, you want to get all your resistances up, especially before you go into the end of the time into the Monos and Echoes. But physical and cold is the main thing right now. For skills, we got two more points for summon skeleton. I'm gonna go ahead and throw one into grave walker, so we increase that maximum skeleton, and then one more into necrotic conviction for that archer damage. We are doing only archer, so that more damage multiplier is huge for them. For the summon bone golem, two more points of both of them going into the amalgam of sentinels. This gives them more health and armor, but it also unlocks the bladed fist, so that they will get on more modifier for the melee damage. After that, we can work towards getting them a more multiplier for the spell damage. I haven't decided which one's actually doing more damage, if it's the spell or if it's their melee. So we'll decide between the Bladed Fist and the Amalgam as we play around with it later. For the Skeleton Mages, we've got two more points. We're going to go ahead and cap out the Splinter Dominion so that they have the extra projectiles every time. And then one point into Grey Merchant, that Critical Strike multiplier, as well as they get healed for a portion of their maximum health every time they do a crit, which will be huge. That'll be their survivability. And then we're going to unspec the Infernal Shade, and we're going to spec into Dread Shade, because we'll be using that one first, and then we'll do Infernal Shade later. But first we have to unlock it. So with our nine passive points, we're going to go ahead and cap out the Frantic Summons for the Minion, Attack, and Cast Speed. And then four points in River Bones for their increased Critical Strike, as well as some Leech for them. This Leech is huge for them. It's really going to allow them to have their survivability go way up with the five points in River of Bones, but that will unlock Dread Shade to be the next skill that we spec into. We have seven points for it, two of them going into Spectral Presence for that increased area, one point in Lone Watcher so it no longer drains their health, but this does make Dread Shade have a cap of one, so we'll just have one of them active, the duration will be longer so you don't have to cast it quite as much, and then of course minions are all going to be buffed that are inside the AoE of it, so we want the largest AoE we'll build into that. We'll put three points in Dying Coven. This will give them increased attack and cast speed, all minions that are inside of it. And then one point in the Blind Flurry. It will blind our minions, which isn't a huge worry, but it gives them 40% increased attack and cast speed, which is huge. So they will have a total of 64% increased attack and cast speed, which is huge. And then next we'll build into that area, we'll build into it giving them the damage, and then we'll build into it buffing them more, the more health that they're missing. So as they die more, they become more powerful, which will be and then for the inventory, nothing new here. We are leveling up some more of the Weaver's Will's items, so we're getting as much of those as we can. But again, nothing's mandatory on this. Just get your resistances and just add as much minion damage as you can to gear. And that'll be it for this update. See you guys at level 50 when we spec into our fifth skill. Alright travelers, we are now level 50, which means we're specking into our fifth skill, which will be Infernal Shade, but first the character sheet, we're sitting at about 800 health, that'll continue to grow. Uh, right now on this first timeline, Necrotic and Physical are really the main things you really want to go for, but getting all your resistance up to 75% is going to be really helpful, and then after that you can start working on Endurance and your Critical Strike Avoidance. For skills, we got one more point for Summon Skeleton, we're going to go ahead and throw that point into Necrotic Conviction for that 15% more armor damage. Once we cap this out, we're going to build into Sweeping Strikes for another more damage multiplier. For Summon Bone Golem, one more point. I'm going to go ahead and start throwing them into Bladed Fist for that more melee damage, another more modifier. This is where their damage will start scaling, because we'll have a lot of more modifiers. They're going to start scaling really well for them. For the mage, one more point. We're going to go ahead and throw that point into Frost Lich so that your mages will only be the Cryomancers now, so they'll be cold. This also gives them another 20% more damage multiplier, which is nice. For Dread Shade, we're going to throw two more points in Spectral Presence. For a larger area, it's easier to keep them all into it. Then four points in Grim Fate will not only increase the area, but it's also going to now give all those minions a 60% more damage multiplier. So you're going to see a big boost in damage now with the four points here. Again, 
the 100% increased health decay does not matter because it's just increased damage taken for the one that's actually targeted now by it. And then with the last three points, we're going to throw them into Lingering Doom to give them flat necrotic damage for all minions inside that area, which will be huge. While we're not stacking necrotic damage necessarily, it will just be a bit more damage for them. And then for Infernal Shade, we got seven points. Eight with the plus one if you have the Relic on. We're going to throw three of them into Influence, one of them into Devour and Plane so that you can now target your minions with it. One point in Burn Trail to haste on minions, one point in Subjugation. This will increase the damage per second of Infernal Shade. And then two points into Manic Prior for that cast speed, attack speed, and move speed for the minion that's attached with it. Again, we're not going to use this too much right now, but once we get the Catalyst that gives us added spell and flat melee cold damage to attacks and spells for all of our minions for every shade we have active we're going to start wanting to pump these out of course we'll build into more survivability for the minions and more increased health so that these can last longer without killing them but essentially all each infernal shade that we have will not only give the minion uh, attack speed cast speed move speed that it's on but it'll be a added flat damage per one active as well later so that'll be really nice for us and that's why we're building into it Passives, we got eight more points. We're gonna cap out that river of bones for the crit chance and the leech. Three points into tyrant for that increased health for us. It does reduce the minion health, but this does unlock the tyrant's legion, which will give us one more skeleton. Then we're gonna go with three points into two moonlight prior for more minion, fire, and necrotic damage for both spells and their melee attacks. But this will unlock the right of undeath, which will then give us our skeleton mage maximum increase the next time that we update. And then for gear, nothing's really changed here. Again, just getting minion increased damage in a lot of spots along with minion health is going to make them feel really good, do more damage, and just be really tanky. Right now they're leeching a lot of that, so the more damage they do, the better their survivability. And then for idols, I've got some minion cooldown recovery and some increased critical strike chance. You can basically wear any idols that you want, though, at this point. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 60. Alright travelers, we are now level 60, time to put in some more points for the character sheet, still working on a resist, we are on the Black Sun timeline now, before I do the boss, I'm really going to want to get my Void resist up, we did do the Abomination, uh, we had really low necrotic and physical, but that fight, you know, was really easy, again, you're just hiding behind the minions, and they kind of take away the target a lot of times, so it's not too hard to survive. For the skills, we got two more points for Summon a Skeleton. We're going to go ahead and cap out the Necrotic Conviction for that Archer damage. One more point in the Holy Rage for that attack speed for them. Two points for Summon a Bone Golem. We're going to go ahead and put both of them into the Bladed Fist for some more damage, more of the melee damage for our Bone Golem. For the Skeleton Mage, two more points. We're going to throw them both into the Cellar Mortis for that base crit chance. The closer to 100% crit you get with the mages, the better their survivability will be because they'll be leeching all of that, so they should very rarely die. For the Dreadshade, we got two more points. We're going to cap out the Lingering Doom for that necrotic damage added for them, and then one point into Flesh Harvest, so they start getting increased buff effect per missing health. And once we cap that out, if they're missing 99% of their health, they'll be getting a 99% increase of that attack speed and damage, which is huge. Nice. But of course they shouldn't be missing much of their life at all, it's just a nice little bonus they'll get when they are missing some or take a big hit. And then for the Infernal Shade, we got 10 more points, we're going to cap out the Manic Prior for the attack speed and cast speed move speed form. 
And then we're going to put 5 points in Cackling Flames so that it will last 75% longer, which will allow them to actually get that max speed in there for them. And then the last 4 points all into Ignition, that mana efficiency at speed so we can start throwing out a lot more of them. Again, we don't want to build into its damage or anything because it will just kill the minions faster that it's actually attached to. Again, we're putting this on minions, not on enemies, so we want to keep the damage as low as possible make it as cheap as possible, and have it last as long as possible. And then for passives, we've got 10 more points. We're going to cap out the Tyrant for all that increased health for us. 3 points into the right of Undeath. This will give us some Ellie Resist as well as some Necrotic Resist, which is nice. And then it'll also give that increased minion elemental damage, so the cold damage increase for them, which is huge. One point in Disciples of Necromancy allows us to have that plus one, so we'll now have five mages. And then one point in Clink Life for that vitality, as well as it'll give you resistances, or minion all resistances, which is really nice for them. A little more survivability, but that vitality, again, more health for us, more spell damage for the golem. And then for the inventory, not much has changed here. So none of these, of course, are mandatory, but again, just get as much increased minion damage as possible. And then for your defense, get your health, get your resistance, and that's really all it takes. The minions will do all the killing for you, and you can survive if you hide behind them. And that'll be it for this update. See you guys at level 76, final one. Alright travelers, we are now at level 78, time to put in all the final points for the skills, the rest of the passives, and finish up this leveling guide as we go into the end game. And I'll have an end game build for this later. But first, for all these points, we have the character sheet, we're still working on our resist, I have no physical resist, we did switch over to low life, it's not a huge deal for survivability, I very rarely die, and that's only if I'm not paying attention. So having a low life build for this, especially if you have a ton of health, is huge going to allow you just to have that survivability as you run around and minions do all the damage for you. You don't have to stop in combat or get in melee range or any of that. But again, you do want to cap out all the resist, get some armor, and then of course get that critical strike avoidance, which I haven't capped. If you do go low life like I am, endurance is not important. Skills, I got three more points for summon a skeleton. Going to go ahead and throw two more of them into the unbound necromancy to increase your chance. Also makes them cheaper. Cast, but you won't be recasting them very often. We're not in Empowered yet, but their survivability has been great. I haven't had one die in the last couple hours of doing Echoes. Then the last point that I have, I'm going to go ahead and throw in two Sweeping Strikes for that 12% increase in damage. We don't care about the melee air. Summon Bone Gone, we got three more points. Going to go ahead and cap out the Bladed Fist for that melee damage, and then one point in Tower of Bones for that size and threat generated. You can always switch these points back and forth if you want them to have more size and threat generated, just so enemies go after it more than they go after you. But he already does a good job of taking the aggro. And then for the Summon Skeleton Mage, three more points here. Going to go ahead and throw two more into Grey Merchant for that critical strike multiplier for them, as well as that maximum health gained on crit. So they get 15% of their maximum health replenished every time they do a crit, which we will have them at 100% crit here soon. And then you can either put the last point into some more leech if they're having survivability issues, mine are surviving perfectly, they haven't died in a long time, so I'm going to go ahead and throw one point in Argonautic Speed, so they have a bit more cast speed. Red Shade, we have three more points, going to go ahead and throw two of them into the Wisdom of the Dead, and then one point into Congregation of that plus one maximum shade with the catalyst that we're running, this is going to allow us to give them another 10 base damage because of the extra shade that we will have active, and I'll go over that in the gear set. Then for the Infernal Shade, five more points. I did take two points out of Cackling Flames for that duration, and that is because I wanted to put one point in the Flight of Fire for the maximum shades, one point in Wildfires, and then put two points in Legion, so that now we can just do all the casting much quicker. Instead of having to get in on six of your minions and casting it one at a time. Now you can just cast it twice and it'll be on six minutes and cast Redshade. So it speeds everything up, makes it easier, and overall it's actually a little bit cheaper. Instead of paying 12 per cast, which would be 36 for three, we now just for 32 mana costs get all three of them. So it's a little cheaper, much faster. And then the last point I'm going to go ahead and throw into Ignition, that last bit of cast speed and mana efficiency. To
passives. We've got 18 more points. Gonna go ahead and cap out to the right of Undeath for that increased minion elemental damage since they are pulled. We're gonna throw 10 points in Blaze of Foreign. That critical strike multiplier, the minion chill chance, which will be really nice to slow the enemies down. And then, of course, the minion cold, what we're building into. Last point, I'm going to go ahead and throw into Aegis Fall. We want to cap out that minion armor shred chance because that will really boost their damage as well as take out single targets. Then 10 points we'll be putting in intelligence as well as the increased chance. And then for the inventory, like I said, the Lich's Scorn is definitely a set item. It's a targetable boss farm drop. I would recommend getting that on another character before this. It really does a ton of damage and of course we're built around using that build so how this works is for every shade that we have active infernal shade or dread shade that you have on enemies or on your own minions for us will be six infernal shades on our minions and then you cast dread shade at the time that you crash dread shade for every one of those that's active i'll get 10 cold damage for spells and attacks for my minions which just really it, it triples their damage which is so with that, we're going to definitely build that. Also, based on your int, they'll have Cold Penetration, which is another more damage multiplier form. It does give them some Frostbite chance, but we're not really building too much into that. The other big thing, it converts Dreadshade over to Cold, so the added Necrotic damage we had inside Dreadshade is now converted to added Cold damage. So it's just a big boost all around. Really nice to have. I definitely recommend that. Don't have to go low life in this build. However, I recommend... For us, survivability is just that much better because we don't really have a source of life replenishment, so just having ward being generated passively every second. And then for the helm, you can get minion critical strike chance for both the skeletons and skeleton mages, and this is base critical strike chance, which is... So getting that on, I believe this is tier 6 that I had, you can get tier 7, which I think rolls up to 10%, and if you do get that, that's going to put it to a point where you're getting to 100% crit with your mages and very high crit chance with all the bowmen, which is very, very... But that's going to be it for this leveling guide. I will have an end game version of this out probably in a week or so when I've got this character much higher level 95 plus and really min max what we're really doing, getting all the gear correct, and then I'll put that on as well. Let me know in the comments how you guys enjoyed it, and hope you got your army as big as mine.